I feel like Salty Crafter right now is going through an identity crisis, so I'm sure Salty Crafter is going to have quite a bit of nightmares on how today's review went. What's up guys? Salty Crafter is back. When I was in bed doing some research on which craft kit I should tackle next, I saw a mission statement on one of the kits. That mission statement said, create wonderful things, be good, have fun. As a salty crafter, I was a little confused. Do I have to be good to make crafts? Is that the purpose of crafting? Am I supposed to feel good? And so I took that as a challenge. This kit must be reviewed. And so today's victim is Mini Bake Shop by Klutz. This week's shout out goes to Carrie Bowden, who drew my stone dragon reading some knowledge, Mega Meerkat, who is a salty crafter fan, and Avatune, who actually redrew my fruit dragon from my dollar store challenge. If you want a shout out in my next Friday video, don't forget to hashtag notification squad in the comment section below within the first 45 minutes of a video's release or hashtag nerdycrafter on Instagram. Shoutouts are on Fridays, so you have plenty of opportunity to try yourself out on my other videos during the week. First things first, let's start with what is this kit? This is a clay set. I didn't know, because I didn't read the description, that when they say clay treats, we're actually going for air dry clay. It's supposed to have everything that you need to create these chibi, cute, kawaii creations. That was a mouthful. One of the things that caught my attention immediately when I took this out of the box is that it comes with a full-fledged book right on top. The instructions in the book are actually extremely clear. They are terrifyingly clear. They tell you exactly what length to make each coil, what size to make each little ball, how to smush it, and when you smush it, what size it should be. So this was actually very refreshing to see. The pictures themselves really do explain it, so the kids don't even need to have read the instructions. Will it actually be clear when I make it? That is a different story. So the fact that we're getting a full color illustration book with instructions, that's pretty impressive. Interestingly enough, it says make 12 clay treats, and they give you 30 sets of bead eyes, which means that you do have a bit of a leeway to create more stuff, so about three more because 30 divided by 2 is 15 and we have 12 and then with the math, um, so then you have three extra sets. I say her calculation is pretty precise, surprisingly for a salty person. Another thing I appreciated in this instructional manual is that they say you can make any of the recipes in this book with air dry clay from your local arts and crafts store. They are not claiming that only their stuff is going to work with their material. They're letting you know you can buy this stuff elsewhere too. As a salty crafter, I'm starting to have an identity crisis. All right, enough jibber jabber. Let's get this out of the way. So I think we can remove the book by opening <laughs> this. Can we? Okay. It doesn't want to come off. Come on. <laughs> Why is this? Do I have to cut it? slice that stuff. There we go. So here are the items that we do get on the inside, which are pretty colorful, and we get some styrofoam and stuff. I want to see it in person. I am genuinely surprised that this clay comes in three different sizes. I actually expected it to be all the same size. Maybe I'm just innocent. So we get full size of pink white, medium size of a yellowish and reddish brown, and much tinier versions of yellow, red, kind of an orangey red, purple, and green. I don't know why they're not all the same size. It would, it would make sense for them to be all the same size because now you're really forcing kids to go with the classic colors as opposed to what if I feel like making a green cake? I don't even get blue. Why is there no black? That is very curious because it would be great to have that in case I wanted to make, you know, anime type eyes. Next we get eight cake and pie forms. We only get one little one. Why is there one tiny one when the whole point is kind of to work small? And then we get three of these absolutely gigantic ones, maybe for dexterity for kids, I guess. Two of the medium and then two pies. I'm just a little annoyed that we wouldn't get at least two of these ones. You should try and at least have two of each, kind of like the pies, these, and that. And then if someone wants to make a bigger one, that's fine, but try to make it even so that kids, you know, don't get jelly. 
We get their glaze and some glitter and sprinkles, clay roller and a tool. I'm pretty excited about this one because you can make mouths and texture. We get about a hundred different little cutouts and designs, which I'm pretty excited about, to be honest. So to make the faces, we have these for the eyes, which are half pearls, and then we have tiny little cute cheeks, pearls, wrappers for the cupcake. All of them are the same color, which is okay, I guess. Here we go. I did not expect this box to be this big. On the box, there's a box. You kind of get this idea that you can put a cake in there, but I really didn't think that this was made for the bigger piece. So you have little glasses, candle, etc. They are double-sided. And of course, for salty science, I did count them and they are 99, exactly as was mentioned. I didn't think the hardest part about making this was actually having to choose which creations to make. Of all the choices I had, I decided to go more specifically with a strawberry cheesecake. If you want to pause and take a look, you can see the exact instructions I'm going to be following and see if we can actually get something similar to this. The texture itself of the clay is a little stickier than the other air dry that I've worked with. So I don't think I've ever worked with air dry clay that sticky. It is gooey if you move it slowly, but sometimes if you go fast enough, it snaps. It is a little sticky and that's why they probably say wax paper. I'm not saying that the sticky is a bad thing though. When I took the exact measurement of clay that they told me to take, I was so surprised. I didn't think it would be able to wrap around because it was pretty thin and I was also scared that, you know, since we have corners on the pie, it would tear somehow. But for some weird reason, it actually worked. So who am I to judge it? That cutting tool was not too bad either. It wasn't sharp, but it still did the job. One of the tools I was pretty excited about is that little U-shaped one that you can create little indents and you can create the mouth, and it worked really well on the crust. You're going to see later on, I wasn't very impressed because some of that clay actually wasn't taking any detail. So you see here the ice cream. As I was trying to indent it, it was like, nope, not having it. So no detail on the ice cream. So I just went the polymer clay way and pinched the bottom. The glaze is not just used as glaze, but it is also used as an adhesive for the clay to each other, which was kind of cool, to be honest. It's just... You know, the brush didn't touch all the way to the bottom. I definitely wanted to try the paper cutouts, so I decided to make a strawberry, put it on top, wait a little bit, and uh, surprisingly, it actually stayed. As you see, I'm trying to put the mouth indent with the tool, but because I've been working on it and at the end I want to put the mouth, it, it just wasn't having it because the clay has already dried up a bit. So we couldn't put the mouth indent. So I decided to make a frown with some brown clay. And here it is, our little salty cheesecake pie. I tried to include different kinds of techniques and I have to admit it is kind of cute even though it has a little frown. All right so all in all let's go through all the cons first because salty crafter of course and then I'm going to mention the pros of this product. I would have preferred that all colors were equal because what it, blah, 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 blah. because what ends up happening is that you're forced to stick to classic colors instead of use your imagination. If they're going to be giving us smaller sized colors, I don't understand why there isn't black. You can at least be able to make your own frown or your own smile. Even though brown did work okay, I think if you wanted them to match the eyes, black would be a good addition. Since each creation does take a long time, I think it would be great if the bags that the clay comes in would be sealable. That would make it so much more convenient instead of having to run to the kitchen, get like eight different kinds of Ziplocs and then shove them right inside. Nowhere on the immediate package does it say non-toxic, but I'm going to assume that most of the air dry clay is, but don't make the same assumption as me. Just, it would be great if they'd had it on the package 
if it were non-toxic. Why is there only one tiny styrofoam? If you're going to give me two of each one and then three of the bigger ones, I don't understand why the little one only has one of them. You know, just to keep things even. I know it's not much of a big deal, but it does kind of smell. It, it's not in your face strong smell, but since you're working kind of small, you're gonna be very close. Yeah, I, I just keep, <laughs> you're gonna be pretty close. You, you might have a bit of a whiff of what smells like school glue. I found myself trying to tilt the glaze thing too much because the brush is so short that it is a bit of an annoyance. The next one, because it is air dry clay, the time in order to make something is actually very short. So you have to consider the fact that details will not stick. So I did have a hard time with the ice cream. I don't know why, because I didn't even keep the brown out for very long, but it just wasn't grabbing the detail. Same thing with the strawberry and unfortunately that smile, but hey, the little brown frown was pretty good. The cupcake paper in there was pretty smushed, so I don't know if there would have been a way for them to keep it in shape or maybe to even add more colors. But yeah, there were three of them and it was pretty flat and for me to just kind of get it in shape would have been a little cumbersome. One of the biggest pros of this kit is that it comes with a fully illustrated, colored manual. It is just absolutely a joy to work with. I found myself looking back and forth, even though I'm an adult, I loved the references, how big to make the little balls, how long to make your little coils. It was just so thorough. And of course the puns, that's what sold me. Another thing I really liked about the manual is that it does give you tips. So just in case you don't know how to use air dry clay, it does tell you use just a little bit of water if you want it to stick together. Also what I like in the manual is that if you mess up or if you, you know, have no more material, they tell you that you could just easily buy it from your craft store and they tell you the name. So it's just so honest because they want you to create and the book is also equally important so they know that you can just pick up your material and continue where you left off. Another pro is that kids get to use glaze. How cute was that? The glaze was great and I didn't think that there would be glaze that would be kid friendly so that's a bonus. Let's look at playability. This is the word that I've been using, whether it exists or not, it exists for Salty Crafter now. It took me about 40 minutes to make a creation and I wasn't even, you know, going into detail, but I was having fun. I completely lost track of time. This kit tells you that you can make about 12 creations. So if you do the math, you're looking at about more or less eight hours of playability time in this kit. This kit is great, not just for kids. I know some people are like, these kits are for kids but they're not just for kids. They're for adults or anyone who just wants to relax and let loose mentally and just be in the moment. So don't, don't judge craft things as just for kids because who are you to make decisions for me? So I would say this kit is not just great for kids, but it's also great for beginners who don't know if they necessarily like air dry clay. So it might be a gateway to polymer clay, just be warned. I was skeptical on the cutouts. I'm like, no way is this going to stick to the clay. I was surprised. It was great and it did stick. Definitely yes on the cutouts. You can use them as mats or, you know, like little boards for the cakes and pies and muffins to stand on. I didn't play with the box, but maybe I'll use it for another creation. And finally, most importantly, it is fun. I feel like Salty Crafter right now is going through an identity crisis because this kit was genuinely fun to play with. So I'm sure Salty Crafter is going to have quite a bit of nightmares on how today's review went. So overall, I give this kit a 9 on 10 dorks. I know that is absolutely unheard of. Thank you to so many of you who suggested that I try out Klutz, who is also kind of affiliated with Scholastic. So I'll leave all their information down below. This is not sponsored. I waste all my money just for you guys. Thank you so much for watching guys. Until then, I will see you in the next video.